Volume 6, Route 2, The Scourge of the High Seas. Oh, we're going into pirate content. Your latest narrative jaunt has you walking down an alternative shore. The two moons light up this beach cove in shades of pink and lime green, their reflections playing as shimmering patterns in the gentle waves. It would be beautiful, if not for the haggard, monstrous ghosts picking the flesh from dead, and pungently rotting fish, crabs, and even one of their own? You keep your distance as they eye you warily, gore on their chipped beaks. These are not potential friends. Everywhere you jump, serendipity seems to guide your hand. But would it be right to call you fortunate? The night is cool, almost cold. You kick a pure white seashell down the beach. It skips gracelessly in the dark gray sand. You have, brought, you have brought friends together and just barely begun to master this tremendous and strange new power. But no, you think. You are not fortunate. As you walk alone down the sand that's still radiating stored up heat from the searing day, you feel a pang. Something is missing. You know you've felt this way before, but you can't place when. You have a gulf within you, the width and breadth of this ocean, in isolation so plain, so true, that it seems impassable, invincible. You step in a weird bug, and you don't even care. Yes, you are filled with a sudden, almost comforting conviction. Nothing you have done on your journey has really made a difference. If you can pick up and put down the lives of these alien weirdos and human weirdos and shake them like an etch-a-sketch when things will go wrong, are you really accomplishing anything? Well, no, but then why are you still doing this? Or are you just building shitty castles in the sand with flimsy plastic implements? Castles that won't mean shit for nothing when the tide rises? You've decided. You are a creature of solitude. You are a rock. You are an island. From now on, you walk alone. <laughs> That's how they all... It's like, it's like a cycle, you know? What one point, they'll be like, I gotta make friends. And then after that, they'll be like, no, I gotta be alone. And then just give them a few more moments and they'll be back to their friend-making journey. There may be an angled figure crouched with terrible posture on a dock ahead. Sure. That figure may be sitting next to an intriguing-looking moored ship. Yes. But surely one glimpse of a potential life to meddle in won't immediately make you fall off the wagon. Back to a life of inner, inner friendship, right? Oh, sweet, a new friend. The only option available. <laughs> God damn it. You amble over to the girl hunched on a dock like the stupid thimble friend slut you are, doing an acrobatic fucking pillarette off the wagon. She hasn't seen you yet, so you watch her like a creep. She's leaning over a complicated pile of papers, erasing boxes and filling them in again. Every once in a while, she pauses to roll various dice. She's playing D&D! As soon as you take one step onto the wooden deck, she looks up and jumps with a feline quickness into a standing position looking immediately ready for a fight. Whoa. Hey, how come I don't know who you are? Don't I always know who they are, like, immediately? What are you? You raise your hands in a pathetic sort of I'm innocent and weak motion, which for you is basically any motion. Wait a second. You're that weirdo that was bothering Kanaya, aren't you? How do you know? Yep, you're exactly that weirdo. And now you're here saying hello to a new stranger and maybe make a new friend. Isn't that great? Great, just what I needed. More meddling. I know I'm the coolest, but I'm kind of busy right now. Big campaign tonight? Dude, you are so good at campaigns, you tell her. You're all about hope and change. You helped Al Gore hang a Chad. Tippy can canoe and Tyler too. What even the fuck are you saying? Don't call me dude, or anything else for that matter. Uh, you mean you're down to help? Maybe be, be her campaign manager? Ha. I'm the captain here, buddy. But, as it happens, I'm currently all out of first mates. Wanna be a swabby? Oh, it's like a boat thing. Yes? So that's why there's a boat there. What are all the papers on the ground for? The campaign, dumbass! They're the character sheets for me? The greatest petticoat sea grip ever to sail the eight seas? One of our friends was raised in a cave, and she still knows what the flarp is. Well, you can step over to the cave and ask her then. Her look of indifference is immediately replaced with a tilt of the head, as though your threat to leave caught her attention. Ew, not unless you want to smell like cat piss for weeks and get high off secondhand nip. Look, it's simple. Pick a name and roll up some stats. For example, 
I am Marquise Spinneret Mindfang. I'm the scourge of the high seas and undefeated champion of naval flarp. My colors on the horizon turn even high bloods into sniveling cowards. You say that sounds really cool, but aren't troll names six letters long? You mean, you've only met a couple before this, but for some reason you have a really strong sense of the rules here. I'm in character here? No, now it's trolling the Marquise. Try to keep up. You guess that explains the outfit. She seems really into this. Maybe weirdly into this? It's all a bit intense. Isn't this just a game? Florp is more than just a game. And I'm the best there is. How about this? If you agree to make a character and sail with me, I'll tell you my real name. You look at her elaborate costume over at her ship and decide, why the hell not? You've already made your front bed, now you have to sleep in it. Not that you're going to sleep or anything. That would be patently ridiculous. Oh wow. Flarp, player's handbook. Gaming flarp flap abstractions. The stat bat is the first and most important of the... I don't, I don't know what that word is. Abstractions? Flap abstractions? You'll be summoning and flarp? It displays our attributes and vitals. This is important. Because your vitals will constantly fluctuate something number of factors including real physical performance and vitality summoning a step that is the first thing something will do upon creating your character creating a character Florp has a simple three-step character creation process that lets you easily decide on both your proficiencies and abilities by setting various attributes which automatically determine your class this is literally DD, but like troll DD. okay let's walk you through this you should be flattered that a master gamer like me is giving you the full tutorial. I had to read the books myself with no help. The first thing you do is rule values for each of the 10 dice rostra. Simple, right? She pops a huge bag of dice out of her syllabus and starts handing you groups at a time. You wrote 2d4 for dice rostra, throne of the empress, and yet two ones. You wrote 66 for dice rostra, conductor stand and six fucking snake eyes stare up at you from the wood of the dock. Wow, you're really bad at this. Take the insult line down. How come none of my choices are choices? You've got you've got to hand it to her. When she's right, she's right. And she's right, so she's right. You finish all 26 dice rolls required for this game, and you've gotten the lowest on each one. What rotten luck. Oh, you're gonna die. <laughs> I have never seen anyone roll this low before, I didn't even know you could get a zero? It's okay. We can save this by putting the stats in the right place. She flips to another page of the player's handbook that shows you the attributes of Flarp. For some reason, you can read them despite just arriving on this planet for the first time. Right? So your Vim Grit Poultritude and Grace combined with real life vitals to make your HP? Wait, real life vitals? Your body is weak and shitty. Is this some kind of hardcore game? The most dangerous game? If you die in the game, do you die in real life? Uh, yeah. <laughs> because the game is real life. You didn't know? The sheer combined shock of what you don't know could kill an elephant quicker than Thomas Edison trying to discredit an immigrant. You get to roll again when you level up, so you won't be so pathetic forever. Yeah, if you survive enough to level up. I mean, if you survive. But with a scourge like me at your side, you're on easy street. I'm jealous of you, really. You gulp and nod. Okay, let's finish this. The Marquise grins. Her lipstick smears a bit where her fangs jut out. You think that's just how it is for Cho's wearing lipstick? But Kanaya's was perfect. She pulls an eight ball out of her pocket and smashes it, suddenly and violently, on the dock. You jump at the noise. She looks at you pitifully, and then decides not to make fun of you. One of the wreck plastic sophistic spear, a gross fucking grubby worm appears. It's like the size of a wiener dog. In its wriggling, you see that it's pulsating. Covered in the blue tinted family recreation water once inside an eight ball, the grub swollen ovipositor glistens. It extends to deposit a massive brood of eggs, each glowing in the center with a slowly pulsating LED light. This is so fucking gross. You look away and dry heave a bit, leading off the dock. So far, this game sucks ass. Jeeg! Don't tell me you've never seen a game grub before. 
You tell her you have never seen a game grog before. Also, maybe she should give a CW before she makes you watch a thing that includes a glistening avipositor? What? Uh, shit. Yeah, that was pretty gross. Here. You bring up the pause menu, click on warnings, and give it a read before making an informed decisions? Have those been here the whole time? What? What are you talking about? Is there actually a pause? Hold on, what? War warnings? Oh my god, warnings. As a general rule, Pester Quest contains adult language, violence, and innuendo. Content warnings for specific routes can be accessed by clicking on the route title. Oh, excellent. Cannibalism? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, hold on, what? Cannibalism, animal, mind control, erectness, and insects in detail, vor, vor, gore, death, parental mistreatment, gender and identity discomfort, strangulation, dyspraxia, stimming, United States politics, historical panic attacks, what the hell is going on? It's a lot of warnings. Friska taps her foot impatiently while you fuck around the game client. Yeah, I know, I was reading the, the warnings. For some reason, seeing a full list of content warnings isn't easing your anxiety on about what's ahead. It reminds you of something that once made you really angry. In fact, you're especially worried about the gore and death tags. Maybe you should just peace out of this. There's basically no harm whatsoever in you yeeting out of this one, and it might save you a drowning for good measure. Not that flirtation with dangerous ends is exactly rare for you. Oh, oh, for once we actually get to peace out? Well... I think I'm gonna try to peace out first. You know what? You're not feeling up to tabletop gaming today? You close your eyes and feel yourself sink into another narrative. Wait! Well, too late. I'm gone. You're lost. Oh, I just peaced the hell out. Aww. Sad. <laughs> Thought I would actually go somewhere else. You know, Friska just really wanted to play some flarp, so you know, we should just indulge her, guys. You know what? You're an informed reader and a prepared gamer. You've got this. You ask Friska what's next. She points to one of the glowing, blinking eggs, which is hatching a pixelated looking bat. It flaps its way into the air with a high pitched squeak and starts glowing and projecting a holographic image of a torch. All right, all you have to do is assign your dice rostra on your attri attribution sconce. What? Pick your best and worst stats. Your top two stats determine your starting class. There's a lot of classes, but I'm already the best one. All right, well, that seems simple enough. What the heck is going on in the text change? Drag attributes into the dice rush drum you want to utilize for them. This decision is permanent, so make sure you are satisfied before pressing finalize and, and sconcing them. What is happening? <laughs> okay, so... Drag attributes to the dice rasha on the attribution scans hover for details. So I literally have no idea what the hell is going on. No class, the attribution scans. Your top two attributes above will determine your starting class. Throne of the Empress. Scrimshaw Workstation. What do these names mean? Huh? So are these just numbers? Your vigor, primary component of HP, high vim makes you more durable? While low vim makes you more dangerous when you're vulnerable? It's like health or some crap? I have no idea what's going on. How, how the heck are they doing this? Appetite. Your, your hunger and enthusiasm. High APP makes you more effective in combat, while low APP improves your passive healing. High makes you more effective in combat, low improves your passive healing. Rascas rascality? Your ability to get away with mischief, rascality, is your compliance matrix defense. Literally, what well, even? I might just start assigning these randomly. Dexterity, the measure of your finesse, paired with GRA for intricate tasks. Grace, your ability to maintain your pose, your poise and smoothness, paired with dex for intricate tasks. Ah, uh, okay. So it's like doing stuff, I guess. Um, maybe I'll just stick these on like even, even level or whatever. Potratude, your suaveness and hard-boiled credentials, important for any action that requires charm or charisma. Oh, you know I am uh, very uncharismatic. Oh, maybe this one here. What does this do again? Can I? Oh, I can't. I can't drag these back out. Oh, damn. Man grit, GRT isn't just for men, but it is what helps you lift sail, lift safes, 
or keep it cool here, wouldn't it? Your sheer confidence. High hub lets you overrule your clouder more successfully. Low hub increases your compliance matrix offense. None of this stuff makes any sense to me. A leverage. Leverage is the foundation of bells of power between clouders. What the hell are clouders? You know, I'm just gonna randomize it because I don't know how's going on. Inventiveness, how you all when clouding. Petticoat secret. Hey, I'm what she is, right? I think that's what her thing is. Okay, I, this is, this is kind of bad though, isn't it? <laughs> oh, whatever. Your two highest attributes are hub and leverage. Your starting class will be petticoat secret. No doubles, pick again. <laughs> Come on, Vriska, why can't we double? Ballerina of the battlefield. I guess I'm graceful. Your two highest attributes are grace and dex. Your starting class will be ballerina of the battlefield. You put the art in the art of war. Do an acrobatic fucking pillar right off the handle. They'll never know what hit them. A max level petticoat sea grip and a level one ballerina of the battlefield. Not exactly the meta strat. You're lucky you're paired with the number one gamer at Alternia. Are we gonna battle? <laughs> Before I can carry you to victory, we need just one more thing. There's more of this bullshit? What now? Is a giant sandworm going to poke its head out of the sand and pu puke up some more fucking game mechanics that will be described in excruciating narrative detail? Quick being so dramatic. Your character needs a name. Oh, a name. You already have one of those though? You told Jade it already. But man, you're not feeling as comfortable with it right now for some reason? <laughs> We're coming up with a whole new character. <laughs> Why is thinking of yourself as a, as a distinct being with an identity and a history feels so uncomfortable? What's wrong with you? Yeah, what is wrong with you? Maybe it's because you don't have an idea. You are an insert character for the player. That's why you have nothing, you know? You feel void. Might as well just make up a character name. I'm literally making a character. Okay, sure, why not? The Marquise welcomes you aboard her ship, Well. We're not holding hands anymore, mom. Our hands are disconnected. Merci. Thank you. Oh shit. 